So today we have a rare treat for the Tengu plant enjoyers out in my audience. Shout out to all of you. We have the rare September 2011 car path video. I know I usually do Edison videos, uh, but, and I still plan on having that be the main focus of my channel, by the way, but I've been thinking about, you know, occasionally like branching off doing some other retro format video because, you know, I'm not like married to Edison format or anything. I feel like there's a lot of people out there who have really strong opinions uh, about formats, especially among like the hardcore player base. There's a lot of, you'll hear a lot of, oh, this format shit, that format's terrible. Every format after this format's terrible. Every format before this date is terrible. You know, this is the only format that's good in Yu-Gi-Oh's history or whatever. You'll hear a lot of that, and that's just not really where I'm at. I feel like when it comes to the popular formats in this kind of time period, like Edison, Tengu Plant, Hat, to the lesser degree, like Wind-Up or Meadowlands or whatever, I generally like most or all of them okay. Like, yeah, you know, I don't... I don't think that there's a tremendous difference in enjoyability. Is that a word? Enjoyable. Anyway, between them. Uh, at least not for me. And I feel like where I'm at is a lot closer to, like, median retro player opinion. Um, if we're talking about, like, normie people out there who just, like, every now and then play Edison or Tengu or whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I enjoy a lot of formats. I enjoy Edison. I enjoy September 2011. I mainly do Edison just because I'm like a fair weather fan and Edison's the big popular one right now. But if everyone woke up tomorrow and decided it's all about hat format now, you know, I'd probably just move over and play hat format. So, uh, anyway, onto the deck. Uh, this is a very preliminary kind of rough draft build of a synchro fusionist turbo deck that I've been sort of thinking up. So, for those of you who don't know, in like 2016, there was this. Uh, synchro fusionist combo deck with like brilliant fusion and instant fusion for Norden where you'd basically just like go off and hand loop it's kind of like a precursor to dark synchro if you're aware of that but then I figured you know in Tengu we don't have brilliant fusion and we don't have Norden but we have future fusion right I mean this card is better than either of those cards uh, and we can search this with fusionist so why not try and make a deck around this I was kind of shocked to find out that no one in Tengu format had ever seemingly, if, from what I could find, like built a coherent deck around Fusionist. I'd seen like a couple of vague ideas, but no actual like fully developed lists. Uh, like I mentioned, this list very much a preliminary rough draft. I'm not 100% sure on the ratios or if this is even the direction I want to go with it or if these are even the engines I want to play. So like I said, could, could uh, go with a completely different idea. Um, but let me just talk a little bit about the list. I'm on two Junk Synchro on two Fusionist. This is the ratio I ended up on. I felt like three and three was too bricky. I could maybe see two of this and three of this, just if you want to get it online as soon as possible. But I'm not 100% sure. I think you need four heroes, uh, at least if you're doing the hero build, which I am. The reason we're on this one, this card's a terrible card, but you can reveal Great Tornado and send it plus Spore to summon a level four Spore for free, so feel like it's worthy of including but again with this card and wolf i feel like there's an argu argument to be made that maybe both are a little bit win more i was previously on instant fusion and i cut it because it felt kind of win more to me like it was just a way of mainly extending your combo once after you sync with fusionist and i wasn't a huge fan of it so i could see maybe swapping this for like a good hero and just taking this out completely but it's nice to have so I don't know. We, well, we'll see. We play like a small light sworn package and troopers. Milling's pretty good in here. You don't want to mill few few. That kind of sucks. But overall, I think you know you want to get this in grave. You want to set up your grave for miracle fusion. You want to put the plants down there. You got a plague and a uh, wolf. So I feel like there's no way you can cut plague. By the way, um, you need as many tuners as possible. Just as many ways to get fusion as live. Because fusion is really important. Our ratios on hand traps and MST are kind of the same as my KFC build. I kind of liked it, so just decided to keep it that way. It was what I had room for. I'm fully wing blast pilled in this format, by the way. Um, big fan of this card. Just super generic, out to anything. Out to big monster. Deals with a back row. Deals with any floodgate. Just crazy fun card. There's a lot of cards we want to get out of our hand as well, so decent card. 
Play a ton of staples. Uh, our search targets, obviously, Future Fusion. I mean, just crazy card. Insanely powerful card. Uh, enables a lot of dumb combos, garbage in here. So, yeah. Probably not as broken as in Dragons, maybe, but, you know, this is like the next most broken way to play it next to Dragons, I think. And then, two Miracle. Three just felt like a little bit too many, I think. You only technically play four heroes, but I think two is kind of the perfect number. I was on Instant Fusion before, as I mentioned, but took it out, so... Yeah, and anyway, for the extra deck, we of course play all of our hero targets for the various garnets in our deck. And we just play some basic synchros and exceeds. So not a lot to, to uh, talk about there, but I think we've talked enough. Let's jump into the actual gameplay portion of the video. First match, we're up against... This one was weird. Our opponent was playing like Light Sworn, which is not a very popular deck in Tengu format. For good reason, I think. It's pretty mediocre. Um, I mean... <laughs> When you draw a hand like this, like, in, in Edison, you could maybe get away with drawing a hand like this, especially considering Dark Hole <laughs> Lamau. But in Tengu format, like, you're just going to get destroyed if you open like this because it, it's just such a faster format. And, uh, you know, decks will go off on you, and if you don't have a an answer, then it's just a big problem, right? See, like, right here, like, this is not even that crazy of a play. We're just going, like, for a standard kind of librarian formula setup but yeah it's just like a huge problem for them uh they fortunately have the dark hole one thing to keep in mind when i was building this deck is uh i felt like i wanted to have sort of alternative plans for when the main like combo isn't viable like usually when i build a deck around an idea like this the main idea is like i want it to be a good deck that then just also does some like crazy jank bullshit so that way, like, you aren't just fully reliant on your, your like, on the tunnel visioning on your dumb, like, combo or whatever. I don't like all-in strategies. I would much rather play something like this. Um, anyway, we couldn't search Future Fusion here because we, like, weirdly already went through every single Future Fusion, like, mill target that would have been high priority. So we just get Miracle. Uh, we do have the Maxi here to respond to our opponent's play, which is really nice getting a little pot of greed here we have miracle and spore for next turn so we can just go for game actually as you can see we go scrap dragon pop the guy miracle into the shining that's going to be what well over well over game so we take game number one game number two going second this hand would be kind of garbage if we hadn't drawn this <laughs> oh man like searching future fusion broke drawing future fusion woke <laughs> just just draw it why, why did i even play Fu uh fusionist if i can just draw it anyway we're about to see why because we have one for one fusionist again which is kind of crazy actually but we're of course going to go librarian formula here i'm going to draw some cards here's a situation where if we had had instant fusion we could have gone into brianak and then just won the game from like bouncing around future fusion getting spore and wolf into play and then extending from there but instead we kind of have to awkwardly use miracle to make trisha low which is i say awkwardly is still a crazy good play for me you know we're still up a bajillion cards so it kind of is win more in that sense we draw a wolf unfortunate but like we got seven cards in hand i mean i feel like we're, we're pretty good to go and yeah that's just gonna be the end of the game light Sworn was probably the weakest deck i played against with this i mean i just don't think it's very good in tengu format nothing against this uh opponent's deck building i just feel like it's it's hard to make it work so anyway next guy we're up against was on infernity infernity very uh, <laughs> very exasperating experience to play against um here we definitely threw the game here by not setting wing blast I feel like even if we didn't know that we were against Infernity, like, what if the opponent just summons a tour guide? Like, that would just kind of suck, too. I feel like if they have Heavy Storm plus a play that messes us up, we just kind of have to accept that we're in trouble from there and hope we can come back from with Miracle BLS or something later on. Um, but not setting this Wing Blast, definitely a, a huge mistake, especially we were going first. We were already plus one card. Giving them the plus one if they just have Storm is not the end of the world. And... We do just kind of lose the game here because we don't have the disruption, so. 
Yeah. I think a, a bit of a mistake on my part. Obviously, it would be much more of a mistake if I hadn't known they were on Infernity, or if I hadn't known they were on Infernity, and I kind of didn't, so... Yeah, anyway, uh, they changed their mind and decided to go Trish here, which I'm not sure if it was correct. I feel like there's merit to both plays, honestly, in terms of, like, getting the Archfiend or going Trishula. I don't know what I would have done. I'm not an Infernity player. Anyway, they're, like, lagging and roll a dice a bunch of times or something, but... We need to draw something, like, pretty good here, and I think we just draw, like, a Raikou, and uh, we try to wing blast the guy in draw phase, hope they can't just go off on us again, but they can, so, I mean, we're just dead here. Uh, nothing we can do. Kind of the original sin of that game, not setting the wing blast, so. We do drop game number one to Infernity. Game number two. Uh, these subsequent, uh, subsequent games were kind of awkward, because I... I brought in, like, three Veiler, three Maxi, and I didn't draw any. So I'm just, like, constantly worried, like, if they're just going to go off and I'm not going to have a hand trap or anything. Um, we go for Junk Synchro, and it gets warninged. Here, I feel confident I can go for it. Space the other one, activate the Future Fusion, which we, of course, hard drew again, because we're just that good. I don't know. Um, we go Mind Control. We, oh, we took the wrong one. Uh, we, we can't sync with that one, as he reminds me. So fortunately, our opponent is chill and just lets us take the tour guide and sync with it. You know, just a casual game. No big deal. We go for the Great Tornado, get the Spore in play, go for the Miracle Fusion. Unfortunately, I sided out Wolf, which means I couldn't go for a game here. Uh, the reason I sided out Wolf was because I just needed to, like take out as many dead cards as possible and bring in as many disruptions as possible because I was up against Infernity. But if I'd had it here, I would have been able to go for game. And I didn't draw my hand traps anyway in either game, so, you know, maybe maybe it was a skill issue there or something. I don't know. Opponent goes Brainac, which... Yeah, kind of rough them being able to just out me like this. But I, I, th I think we're still in a really strong position. Uh... If we hadn't had the stop for this Archfiend, we would have been in trouble. But we have the Mind Crush, so they just draw phase, declare Archfiend, reveal it, and we chain Mind Crush calling Archfiend. Um, I'm pretty sure this works that way. Like, it's chain like one Archfiend, chain like two Mind Crush. Mind Crush discards it. It can't special itself from Grave, right? He was, like, asking about this, and, I mean, I think it should work that way, right? Let's, someone let me know if I cheated, like, I see no reason why Mind Crush wouldn't stop that. So, man, game three, we once again open like a really slow hand with no hand traps in it. I'm just like, oh, God, please don't go off. Fortunately, he drew a slow hand as well, so. We, uh, the gods of card games graced us with a little bit of luck there. Here, I feel like the set monster is Necromancer. It's actually not, but I think I have to wing blast it and just hope that this card isn't Judgment or maybe Call of the Haunted, which it turned out not to be. And at this point, because he set his whole hand just to combo and didn't set it on turn one, I'm like, all right, he probably doesn't have protection. So we just got to go for the Storm to get that auto win, and he just scoops to the Storm. So, whew. We uh, narrowly, narrowly avoid defeat against Infernity. I don't think we resolved Fusionist in this matchup, actually. Um, Infernity's kind of a weird deck to play against though because games are over really fast um yeah but anyway close game cool player fun match all right final match up against piper chaos piper chaos a very fun deck i think very cool deck game one we're going second and we have just drawn like the most abysmal brick imaginable hands like this are a good argument for cutting wolf probably um and my opponent hits a level 1 off their pipe or 2. Oh, yikes. So they set 2. I'm just like, we'll hit with Ice Edge, try to force something. They have the Fader, unfortunately, so we don't get any... We don't get any kind of plus there. Um, they go for Caius. I'm just like, okay, set Fusionist and Hope, I guess. <laughs> mm. But we're just... We're down bad here. We, we have nothing we can do whatsoever. We have three, four completely dead cards in hand. We have to go for Dark Hole. Triggering their Sangan, they search another Fader, which not the biggest deal for us. They go MST. I don't know why they didn't end phase that, actually. Hmm. It's weird that they spaced and then didn't do anything. Um, but now they have BLS, so... 
that's a lot of pressure. I was kind of hoping that they would just be stuck on a hand with a bunch of level 1 guys that can't really threaten my life, but they find the BLS. I go for Minecon. I know they have Valor. So I decide to force it and then go for the Miracle Fusion. Actually, you know what? If they had chained DD Crow here, I think my Miracle would have fizzled. And then I would have had to, like... I didn't even know what I could do at that point. I feel like there's nothing I could have done. Um... Yeah. Maybe slight mistake. We go Reborn on their BLS. Unfortunately, this would have been a really good spot for me, actually. But they... Because they, if you see their hand, they don't have a lot that deals with this, but they draw into a Chaos Monster off this Piper. So then they're able to out the BLS, and we're back to being in a very precarious spot. We aren't dead yet, but there's a lot we are dead to, so... Uh... And we keep drawing more defense instead of drawing monsters, and we really want to find monsters right now. Here they miss game again. I think they they also missed game earlier when they could have just gone Levier for the Ice Edge to attack directly for six for eight hundred. And here they, I don't see why you don't just switch Sangan. Like I, it's kind of perplexing. But I mean, it's not going to matter. They're they're so far ahead, you know. They can afford to play as safe as they want, I guess. <laughs> game two. Again, we draw the wolf. A little bit rough. Fortunately, their hand's kind of slow, and we have the plague, so we're pretty sure we can resolve Fusionist here. I think given that this wasn't disrupted by the back row, that it's probably like an MST, or at least there's like a 50-50 shot as MST. So I decide to hold my few few and just like set a back row, try to bait it. That plan is going to work. Hmm. I'm not sure if they should have summoned Crow, but I feel like they were in trouble either way. Now we're going to go Brianac Future Fusion and just completely go off on them. So, I mean, yeah, this is uh, this is just like full meme combo here. I make a slight mistake at some point here. I think I, for Spore, I banish the Dandy instead of the Nosp, which means I wouldn't be able to Avarice back the Dandy and make Trishula by bouncing Future Fusion again. So I kind of... I mean, it's not going to matter, right? We're, we're just... We win at this point. Like, if you... <laughs> Pre-enact Future Fusion is, like, super GG, you know? So, yeah. End of the game there. Definitely, you can just randomly win like that. Uh, we have the out for the Thunder King here. We're just going to try to Gores him. I do drop the Gores. Unfortunately, main two, he's going to be able to Chaos Monster my... Gores, so then I just have like a thousand token that doesn't really do much. Here we go for Rota, for Stratos. So in Stratos, we aren't able to force the Valor or the Judgment. He Judgments the Miracle Fusion. Um, oh, I was on a build with Instant Fusion earlier and I had a rank 4 in it. I think I ended up adding a rank 3 and a rank 4, but I didn't have one here, so kind of awkward misplay there. Sorry about my play, guys. I'm really... Quite rusty at this format. Here, I don't know if he should have gone for this. I see no reason not to just attack. It's like there's nothing here you need to Kaius. And there's not really battle traps in this format. At least, not unless you're playing some super back row heavy deck, so. I feel like he could have played a little more conservatively there. I think, okay, we go for the Ice Edge. We're just playing safe. Just want to, like... Because we're, we're up on card advantage now. We feel like we can just get into a like, checkmate kind of position here. Unfortunately, the Fader is going to stop the Ice Age again. I think ultimately with the way I played this, the Reborn actually never gets used, weirdly enough. The Foolish top deck's really nice. I decide to go try to Ice Edge out the back row. Maybe I should have done that in before I even did any of this play because he could have warninged my Formula Synchron. Probably a little bit of a mistake here, but we're just going to Trish him in main two, and that's going to basically be the end of the game, so. Banishes a light and a dark to summon Glow Bulb and uh, concedes the game. So, those were the matches I played. Uh, some of them were a pretty good demonstration of the basic idea. You know, you sync with Fusionist, you get Future Fusion, you make dumb plays with Future Fusion. It's definitely a cool deck. Um, like I said, not really sure. Very preliminary kind of build. If you have any kind of uh, ideas for alternate ways to go with the deck or different card choices or different, you know, uh, different synergies or things I could do, 
be sure to let me know in the comments because I'm definitely open to new ideas. Definitely looking for ways to make it better. Uh, yeah. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time in what will probably be another Edison format video. But anyway, that's all for today. Peace out. <laughs>